your trade proposals for Zach Gallon, Pablo Lopez, what the Twins roster is going to look like on opening day. 39 questions. I'm going to try to get to every single one on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Thursday, January 19th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thanks for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Again, this is Nash Walker, four seasons writing about the Twins at TwinsDaily.com, three seasons hosting a daily show on the Minnesota Twins three days a week until pitchers and catchers report, and then we'll go back to our usual five. And I ask for mailbag questions, and as usual, you did not disappoint. If you ever want to ask me questions at Nash Walker nine on Twitter or at locked on twins, you can DM, you can send a tweet, whatever you want to do. I'm going to try to get to every question today. I don't think we will, but I'm going to try. So let's jump into this from icy blue. Would you trade Luis Arise and Royce Lewis in a deal for Zach gallon? For those who don't know, Zach gallon, Arizona diamondbacks, a true ACE three years of team control. I would trade Luis Arise and Royce Lewis. For Zach Gallon, if that's the only two that you're trading. Gallon, true ace. It would be painful, but potentially one of the more impactful trades in Twins history. It could go either way in being impactful. But yes, I would trade a rise in Lewis in a deal for Zach Gallon. Aces don't grow on trees. Galachize, what do you think this season looks like for Brooks Lee? I think he's going to crush double A. I think he's going to move to St. Paul. And I think he's going to join the Twins by August. Let's say I'm that much of a bull. On Brooks Lee. I think he's going to be on the Twins roster by September 1st. That's my prediction for Brooks Lee. Aaron, who will have a bigger season, Alex Kirilov or Jose Miranda? If Alex Kirilov clicks, he's going to be an absolute monster in his career, I think. All around hitter. I think AK has the higher offensive ceiling. I think Jose Miranda has the higher offensive floor for 2023, but I also think Jose Miranda, I've predicted. 130 weighted runs created plus four to five win player in 2023. I'll take the sure bet in Miranda, but it would not surprise me at all if Alex Kirilov had the second best offensive season on the roster to a Correa or a Buxton, or maybe even the best offensive season. I think he has that much upside. Josiah, a couple of questions. Josiah, what are your thoughts on the Twins international signing? So the Twins, their their top signing in terms of dollar figure, Ariel Castro, an outfielder for 2.4 million was a top 15 international prospect I like what they did here I think I like that they're putting money at the top of the class and with Emmanuel Rodriguez in 2019 already a success story as a prospect we'll see if he gets to the bigs but he's a top 50 prospect already in baseball America it bodes well for the future with these international signings for the twins so I like what they did we'll keep an eye on Castro and, and Chivilli and some other guys they signed just I also is it just me or have the twins targeted and acquired players who are high character leaders this offseason? I definitely think it's been a focus. I think they've done their due diligence on backgrounds of players. I think it's it's come into focus in recent years. I'm not saying anybody caused that, but yes, I think it matters to them. I think it matters to them to build a clubhouse and a culture that they like and that their players like. So yes, definitely think the twins have targeted and acquired players who are known to be high character leaders like Carlos Correa is known as a leader. I think absolutely that's true. Proud 24 years. Breakout season speculations. I know you did three twins you like for 2023 already. I'll go off the beaten path. I'll say Edward Julian has a breakout season. I think he's going to be a big factor for the twins in 2023. He's that dude at the plate, crushes right-handed pitching. I think he's going to force himself into some plans, and and I he's my breakout pick. My one breakout pick I have not highlighted yet would be Edward Julian. Ryan, is the new M logo really just a ploy to make any new pitchers acquired from the Marlins feel more comfortable? It looks that way. Very much looks like the Marlins cap, but hopefully we get used to it. Andrew says, I feel like if a Pablo Lopez trade was going to happen, it would have by now. This front office loves to surprise us and make moves in silence. Who could you see this FO surprise us with before the season? Keep an eye on an impact bat. We've talked about some corner bats. But someone crazy would be Brian Reynolds, right? They're asking for a Juan Soto type of package. Twins are not going to pay that. But if it comes down, 
that would be a surprise, obviously, to go out and get Brian Reynolds from Pittsburgh, who is an all-star level player. I also wouldn't rule out a move for a legit back-end reliever, someone better than Fulmer. I wouldn't rule that out via trade either. So those would be surprise watches. Alex says, do you see Bailey Ober as a potential secondary piece in a trade for a starting pitcher? I think his youth, youth and control would be desirable for teams and would free up a rotation spot. I've wondered about including Ober or Joe Ryan in a deal for a controllable starting pitcher. It's a strong argument in theory, but I do think it depends on how other teams value those two. If Joe Ryan, for example, is a key piece in a trade that brings back a frontline starter, I think they have to do that. Same for Bailey Ober, but I think Ryan would carry more value in general. Question from Ryan, what top prospect breaks in, into spring training with the big league team like Duran did last season? Jordan Balzavic is my pick. I'm going to say he has a big spring. I'm going to say the velo is there, the right knee is healthy, and he starts the season in the Twins bullpen. Jordan Balzavic, he's my pick, bounce back pick, makes the team out of camp, which would be a huge surprise, but he has the talent to do it. Keenan, I'd like to hear your top three things that need to go right for the Twins this season. Health, health, and health. No, I think things that need to go right, they need guys to step forward. They obviously need to be healthier, more guys on the field more often, but they need steps forward. They need steps forward not only in the big league club, but at the top of the minor league system. Royce Lewis, Alex Kirilov, Trevor Larnick, Ryan Jeffers, that young core hopefully steps forward in 2023. Those are keys in Curry and Buxton. I mean, how many games did they play together? That's the biggest question for me with this roster, and it was in 2022. How many times can you get them on the field together? Those are top things to watch and, and key factors for the Twins. Keenan also asks, what are your thoughts on keeping the team we currently have, not trading Luis Sarai's, not adding starting pitching until the trade deadline, when we could get someone for cheaper, maybe, with less team control? I think it's a fine way to go. I think last year that was clearly the path. That's what they decided to do. But we saw what can happen. If you wait until the deadline and you're really tight at the deadline in the standings like the Twins were, and you trade a bunch of prospect capital for Tyler Malley, Jorge Lopez, Michael Fulmer, and then you get hurt and injury variance destroys you and Cleveland plays extremely well down the stretch and they take the division, then you're stuck and you're like, ooh, maybe we should have made those moves before the season started and built a bigger lead. There's risk in not building a bigger lead in the division. So when you get to the trade deadline, it's too close for comfort and those variant things can get you. But I'm not I'm not against that, Keenan. I worry about that. I think you should put the best team you can put on the field on opening day. But I understand the argument otherwise to wait until the trade deadline. So much more coming from so many of you. Amazing questions after this word from betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college basketball to the NBA. Whatever you're looking for, the World Baseball Classic, MLB, we got some futures. They've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, if you've already made Locked On MLB Prospects your second list and Locked On MLB your third list and Locked On White Sox your fourth list and Locked On Guardians your fifth list and Royals, Tigers, everybody, go over to betonline.net. They even have sports podcasts and they're always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online is where the game starts. Again, so easy to use, desktop, mobile phone, whatever you desire. BetOnline.net, they have you covered with everything you need, sports analysis, sports podcasts, sports lines, odds, news. It's all there at BetOnline.net. Thanks again for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. And I'll make your second listen, Lockdown MLB Prospects. Following this episode, host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Continuing on, Jacob, who do you honestly think the Twins will sign or trade for before the season? I think they will sign a reliever. And the three relievers I'm looking at, Michael Former, Zach Britton, the lefty from New York, formerly of the Yankees, free agent, or Alex Reyes, who has huge stuff, got hurt. Cardinals was exceptional, then ran into a rough stretch at the end of 2021. Really like Alex Reyes is kind of a buy low candidate with huge upside. Tom, could you see anyone taking a Griffin Jacks like step forward in the bullpen this season? I'm going to stick to my pick, Tom, with Jordan Balazovic. He's going to be my pick. Last year was a disaster. I'm going to say he comes back healthy, has a great spring training, working out of the pen, throws gas. He's 97, 98 out of the pen, hypothetically, and he's healthy. And he, he has a big time year. 
in the Twins bullpen. Maybe that leads to him still being a starter or he's a high leverage reliever like Griffin Jacks. Ian, if the Twins do trade for Pablo Lopez, what do you think would be a fair value of players going to Miami? Any names in particular? I've said it over and over and over. Not Luis Arise. Dan Hayes reporting the Twins are not comfortable trading Luis Arise for Pablo Lopez. I could see Edward Julian as a centerpiece, but I think the Marlins want more than that. There's a reason this has not gotten done. So I come back to that. There's a reason this has not gotten done, and it's because either the Twins or Marlins are not satisfied with either side of their deal, and other teams can get involved in this too. Or either the Cardinals are involved, and they have a much richer prospect pool than the Twins, at least on paper, so they can get involved and they could essentially blow the Twins out of the prospect water if the Twins are unwilling to include a rise or Kirloff or whoever the Marlins are looking for. We know they're interested in Luis Arise, but I would not trade Luis Arise. I could see Julian Larnick. I wouldn't do Kirilov either. Like it's just, it's, it's that fine line. You got to find for Pablo Lopez, Michael, what's the rules with the shift ban and how big of a factor could that be for Kepler and Gallo? My understanding is teams need to keep two infielders on the dirt on either side of second base, but Aaron Gleeman and Phil Miller and John bonus on their podcast today said, Don't be surprised if teams take an outfielder and put him in the grass right behind second base. Technically not breaking the rules. They're not breaking the rules because the infielders are still on the dirt, but it's essentially a quasi shift. So I think teams are going to find ways around it. I think these guys, it's overhyped how much they're going to benefit from the shift. But I I would expect better seasons from Joey Gallo and Max Kepler, but not dramatically. So I think it's going to help them, but not dramatically. Like 10, 15 more hits, I think. For Kepler and Gallo, especially Kepler because he puts the ball in play more, but it's weak contact. Sean, what creative deal would you like to see the Twins make for a right-handed corner outfielder, or would you prefer a dark horse prospect like Austin Martin, Brooks Lee, Royce Lewis, or a free agent? In the show this week, I mentioned Tyler O'Neill, Yadi Diaz plays third, but you can move him over to first, just corner bat. And then in the outfield again, Manuel Margot is right-handed targets. I love the idea of trading for one of those guys. So those three. And O'Neal's like, I'm getting messages about my O'Neal pick, but that tells you how the Cardinals probably value Tyler O'Neal. They, they probably want to hold on to Tyler O'Neal, even after a down season. But keep an eye on those guys. Uh, keep an eye on corner outfielders, certainly as we get closer to opening day. Darth Yoda, why are we not utilizing our triple A players in the infield who could develop in the majors? Let's spend more money on a quality starter. So I assume this is in reference to the Correa contract. And my response would be, the Twins have no surefire bets to play shortstop in their system. Royce Lewis, Brooks Lee, Austin Martin, all question marks for varying reasons. Royce is coming off back-to-back ACL surgeries. Brooks Lee is probably going to be a third baseman. He's going to get bigger, stronger. I don't think he's going to play short every day. And then Austin Martin is the least likely of all of them to play short at the big league level on an everyday basis. So, And Martin doesn't have the back. That's even anywhere near, at this point, Lee, Lewis, or Correa. You're going to see young players in the infield. It's just not going to be at short right away. I mean, Correa is their shortstop for the next six years. You will see Royce Lewis at short, I think. You will see Brooks Lee at short, but not every day. It's going to be a young infield, I think, moving forward. Once Jorge Polanco leaves in free agency or the Twins don't pick up his club option, it's going to be Julian, Miranda, Arise, you know, Correa, Lewis, Lee, Martin. All those guys are going to factor in. So you're going to see young players in the infield just not at short because they didn't have any surefire players to play shortstop. And that's why they really wanted Correa and they got him. Tony, who is the one minor league twin you have both eyes on during spring training? Edward Julian. If he crushes, I think he's going to start in St. Paul, but if he crushes spring training and then he has a great first month in St. Paul, he's going to be with the twins before you know it. JF once Royce is cleared, does he go to St. Paul for a short duration or until September? And if he is brought up to the big league club in the summer, Where does he play? I think Royce will rehab in St. Paul with regular days off. He's coming off, you know, another ACL surgery. I would guess like two to three weeks. I think that was built into his return plan. But right now I would think after the all-star break is, is kind of what I've heard. I don't want to misreport that, but I think after the all-star break is the hope, but depending on how he looks, will be where he plays. I you're hoping Correa is healthy and he's playing short and then, You'll have Royce Lewis in left field or backing up Byron in center or playing right or wherever the Twins need him. I think he will play and they'll get him ready for that at St. Paul during his rehab. Alex, thoughts on Nick Gordon and Kyle Farmer both being super utility options instead of worrying about a right-handed fourth outfielder. 
since Garlic will be up after an injury anyways. Yeah, it's interesting the Twins view Kyle Farmer as a left fielder. That kind of changes the view of left field in general. I think a Nick Gordon, Kyle Farmer platoon is pretty solid, but as it stands today, Kepler's still on the roster. So you have to assume he's in left, Gallows in right, Buxton in center, and and Farmer and Gordon are kind of bench pieces, but that's that's not a bad platoon. Breepy, what are the odds we trade Kepler and some change for another arm? I still think the odds are high, but my expectations have lowered a little bit as we get closer and closer to opening day. I think there's a chance the Twins do keep Kepler, and they would boast one of the best defensive outfields in baseball. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but it's true. Ben, do you think it's a viable option to have Kepler in center field and make Buxton a full-time DH? It would make sense, but Buxton's recent injuries have mostly come on the bases. So taking him out of center field is probably not going to solve all the all of his issues. And because he's so valuable and still under 30 in center field, you keep him there until he legitimately cannot play out there anymore. So that's a question for another day. I think in the future, right now, he's just way too valuable defensively. And his injuries have come on the bases. In recent, you know, recent years have come on the bases. Jordan, if the twins trade arise, who would you want to see in return for a fair trade? It's got to be a true difference maker because arise is a difference maker for the twins. And when I say that, it's a player with four to five win upside that's an impact right handed bat or a legit frontline number one starter or a number two with upside. And I, that's not because I'm overvaluing a rise in relation to the league, but I'm overvaluing a rise in relation to his value to the twins. And that's why it needs to be a true difference maker in their lineup or in their rotation. Lobster Knoll with a seemingly log jam of infielders. What does the MLB path for Julian look like? He's going to play for the twins in 2023 second baseman, but Sounds like fringe second baseman defensively, probably second base DH as soon as this year. His main path is second base if Polanco misses time, is traded, or is no longer on the team uh, whenever. It's going to be Edward Julian, I think, stepping up next. Sir Wall, what will, should the Twins do at the trade deadline if things are actually going well? Also, what do they do if Gallo really does bounce back into what he was with the Rangers after they hypothetically trade Kepler? What or should they try to get another year or two out of him or no? So the, the same things they need now for the trade deadline, which would be notably a frontline starter, a big right-handed bat. The thing about Gallo is they were willing to give him one year and 11 million coming off a year where he hit 160 and was truly horrific. If he has a, a year like he had with Texas where he's a four-win player, I think they're going to give him a qualifying offer, which is one year for 20 million. And if he declines it, they get a draft pick. So I think that's, Maybe part of the calculus is if Gallo has a bounce back season, you can offer him the qualifying offer. He can either take it or he can go to free agency and you get a draft pick. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's part of it. I don't think he's going to come back in a multi-year deal unless things go extremely well and the Twins want to invest. But you can get a draft pick if he has a nice year and you give him the qualifying offer. Chad, what pitcher would you like the Twins to trade for? It's hard to gauge. There's not a lot of guys out there, which is why the Marlins are stingy about Pablo Lopez, I think. Brandon Woodruff was my number one target throughout the offseason, but Milwaukee, they're saying he and Corbin Burns are not available at this point. So there's not a lot out there. I mean, Lopez, you can dream on Gallon. You can dream on some reclamation projects in Aramon Marquez, Brad Keller, but doesn't really get anybody excited. Connor, what would a realistic package look like for Zach Gallon, ideally without Brooks Lee? I chalked this up. A package for Zach Gallon would be absolutely massive. It would look something like this to me. Jose Miranda, Alex Kirilov, Joe Ryan, Marco Raya, who I have as the Twins' top pitching prospect, and Emmanuel Rodriguez, who I have as the Twins' third best prospect in the system. So Miranda, Kirilov, Ryan, Raya, Rodriguez probably gets the conversation started for Zach Allen. That's how good he is, and I think how much he would net in a trade. Not the fuzz. Would they convert Joan Duran back to a starter? The fear is not that Duran wouldn't be able to be successful as a starter. It's his right elbow. His elbow's the problem. He had elbow problems in 2019 or in 2021, excuse me. And now he's one of the best relievers in baseball. So you don't want to ruin a good thing. Obviously, you dream on it, but with his health, it you you don't want to risk that. Sign Profar says thoughts on Giovanni Moran. I think he has great stuff, still young, and really the only lefty in the pen other than Theobar. Could you see him taking a Jacks like step this year and becoming a really solid option for us? Absolutely. Love Giovanni Moran for 2023 if he can refine that slider to get lefties out more consistently because he's better against right-handed hitters. He was fantastic for the Twins in that mop-up role last year, and the FIP was 
off the charts good. So yes, Giovanni Moran, easy pick for a breakout. Just got to refine that slider to get lefties. Sports Actuary, what do you think the biggest X factor that could lead to the Twins reaching their ceiling? I said, how many games of Byron Buxton and, and Carlos Correa stay together earlier? And I think that's that's a key. Like, how many do they play together? My other X factors, Miranda, Larnick, and, and Kirilov. Those three, do they combine for 10 wins above replacement or less than 10? More than 10 or less than 10? 10 or more, I think things went well. Less than 10, things probably didn't go so well for the Twins. So those are some keys. Ben, where do you see Joe Ryan and the Twins rotation in three to four years? Joe's a solid mid to back of the rotation starter today. I think he took some steps forward with his off-speed stuff last year. But the question you have to ask yourself is a, a starter who throws 90 to 93, you know, really humping it up, he'll get to 94, 95 in the first couple innings, living at the top of the zone. How successful can that guy be? Because they're going to give up a ton of homers every year. It's, it's going to happen. If you throw 90, 92, throwing up in the zone, you're going to give up a lot of homers. Can he succeed as a frontline starter with 90 to 92 up in the zone? I have my doubts. So I see him as a mid to back of the rotation starter in three to four years, but I wouldn't be surprised if he proved me wrong in that regard. Ryan, what are your division predictions as it stands today? I'll go Astros, Yankees, Twins, Padres, Braves, Cardinals. Those would be my division predictions, even though I think the Guardians are a step ahead of the Twins as it currently stands. I'll get optimistic and take the Twins to win the Central right now. Purple Norwegian, Twins bullpen. Instead of adding a reliable right-hander, I feel a lefty who can pitch more than an inning would be a better choice to strengthen the bullpen. I like that idea, and the market is more flush with left-handed relievers. Matt Moore, Andrew Chafin, Zach Britton, more lefties on the market right now. But the Twins have Giovanni Moran and Caleb Thielbar and Danny Coulomb in the system. It's hard to see that happening, but I don't mind the idea of adding another lefty to the bullpen. Purple Norwegian also says, what are the pros and cons of trading Luis Arise before the opener versus postseason? And can this team win a World Series or a playoff game with a one-dimensional Arise with ankle and knee issues, or would we be stronger with a healthier two-way player? So the pros of selling Arise now are you're selling super high. He just won the batting title. Three years of team control is going to net a bigger package, and you have in-house replacements. For Luis Arise in, you know, hopefully in-house replacements with Alex Kirilov and, and Larnick and Julian and other guys who hopefully fill the void in the lineup. The cons of selling now is he just won the batting title. He's invaluable to the lineup and he's a clubhouse beast. He's in the fan base, loves him. So those are the, the cons of selling now. The pros of selling after 2023 is you have him for this year. You can see how he plays. And then it's less risky because of team control. You're only giving away two years instead of three years of Luis Arise. The cons of selling are the value may never be higher than right now. You're probably never going to get more for Luis Arise than you get today. If you can get a significant difference maker in the front of the rotation or in the form of a right-handed outfielder for Luis Arise, you do it. Otherwise, you hang on tight. I think it's very simple to me. Got to be a difference maker in the front of the rotation or a right-handed bat in the outfield who's a legitimate four to five win upside player those are the keys for me to remove him from this lineup zach what are your thoughts on the rotation i think this is the deepest rotation of the Derek falvey thad levine regime but it's also filled with question marks of injuries and upside at the top how much upside is there really in this rotation Who's the first up from AAA? Louis Varlin, I think, is going to jump Josh Winder as the first up because I think Louis, he dominated AAA last year, and I think he's six. I think he's six. I think Winder's seven. I think Woods Richardson's eight. That's my current order. Even though Winder pitched more for the Twins last year, it performance matters, and this team's trying to win in 2023. What's your bullpen pecking order? I know the Twins won't, likely won't use traditional roles, but how would you rank the pen from most reliable to least? I like that today. On this day in the offseason, I'll go Joan Duran, clear number one, step down. Caleb Thielbar will be second. Griffin Jack's third. Jorge Lopez, four. That's like my second tier. It would be Duran on his own tier. The next tier will be Thielbar, Jax, Lopez. And then another tier down would be Jorge Alcala on his own island. I don't really know what to think of him right now, coming back from an elbow problem. And then another tier down would be Giovanni Moran and Emilio Pagan. But Moran could jump up. Pagan could jump up, hypothetically. Um, to a higher tier, but those would be my tiers today. What do you think the identity for the 2023 Twins will be? The early identity in 2022 was an offense that was dangerous. They clogged the bases, they got on, but they couldn't score with runners in scoring position. And my guess is that 
the 2023 group will have a dynamic offense. I think it's going to be a fun lineup to watch. I think they're going to score runs. I think they're going to get on base. I think they're going to be tough to face for an opposing pitcher. I think the rotation is going to be solid if they're healthy and the bullpen is, is the true wild card. I want to believe the bullpen will be a bright spot for them, but it is a wild card. You don't know. They can beat anyone with Byron Buxton, Carlos Correa, Joan Duran at the top of the roster. They have a lot of talent at the top. I think the identity for the Twins, if things go really well, will be a top three offense in the American League that hits a bunch of homers, that scores a bunch of runs, that's led by Correa and Buxton and, and breakouts from Kirilov and Miranda has a big year. That's And then a solid pitching staff. That's That's the upside for the Twins. That would be the identity of just an extremely dangerous offense with a very – solid pitching staff that's what i hope the identity will be am i crazy for thinking joe ryan can cement himself as a sunny gray level starter i really enjoyed watching analyzing him last year seems like even the starts where he didn't have it were still mostly competitive no i mean it's not crazy to think that joe can be as i said a frontline starter you just have to ask yourself living at the top of the zone low 90s the invisible it's a unique pitch maybe he's the unicorn he's going to figure it out with his off speed and he'll turn into a frontline starter. It's hard to do. You have to greatly limit your damage on secondaries. If you're going to pitch at the top of the zone at that velocity, can't hang sliders, can't hang changeups. You got to just get beat with your fastball and have solid secondaries. And right now, Joe Ryan has developing secondaries. I'm hopeful he gets to like a low threes ERA type of guy. If you take out his San Diego start last year, where he gave up five homers, he would have been a low three ERA guy, but there's a reason you can't take that out. Cause he gives up a lot of homers. He gave up five that night so i'm hopeful um we'll see thank you so much for all your questions we packed those in i'm so grateful for you thank you for making locked on twins your first listen every day now make your second listen locked on mlb prospects host lindsey crosby is a prospect encyclopedia he's going deep on the mlb stars of tomorrow it's free and available wherever you get your podcast on the lockdown podcast network where it's your team every day thank you so much have a great day and go twins